Yeah, let me once you're able to see my screen. Today we're going. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So today we are going to discuss on different types of variables, uh, their usage, and also the lo looping concepts, like uh, the conditional statements. So, so in Java, in Java we have we have concept called as variable. So that variable is a container which holds the value. Okay. So it, it can hold it can like um, whatever value which we want to store. Uh, it has a specific type. Like let's say if you know, like let's say you as a person you have a name, you have an age, and you have date of birth. So your name will be stored in type of string. Your age will be stored in type of a number. That number is called integer. I n t int. So each and every data has its own data type, and that data type data will be stored in something uh, uh, in a container called as variable. So a variable in Java is simply a container which will hold a value. So we have three types of variables within our whole uh, Java concept. That is a local variable, a static variable, and an instance variable. Okay. So whenever you are declaring a variable, uh, either locally or static or instance variable, they there will be a area, there will be a memory allocated for it. Meaning, uh, where, uh, like we have something called a JVM, right? The Java Virtual Machine. So whenever you are assigning some value to a variable, that means within a Java Virtual Machine, that variable will occupy some space there. So, so, so for any program to run, you, uh, you, you need some, you need some sort of a memory. So we have two types of memories. One is the heap memory, and one is the stack memory. So we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to work, when when we are doing the live coding. Okay, so whenever you're assigning anything to, to a variable, that will that will have a um, like that that will have an area in the memory. Okay, so now let's um let's say what are local variables? Local variables are declared inside the body, and instance variables these are declared inside the class but outside the body of a method. So. Um, just let me show you one small example. So this is called a class. If I declare, uh, let's say, string name. Okay. If I declare some uh, in this way, that means I'm allocating some space with a with the name called name name in my heap memory. So since this variable is directly under my class, this is called as instance variable. Okay, so you are you are directly instantiating it within the class, and this this is called as a method. Public static void main. This is called a method. So if you're going to uh, write some variables here, int a equal to one or int b equal to four, string. I'm going to write it as string name, string num equal to something. So a, b, num, these are called your variables. So these are called your local variables, meaning these are accessible only within your method. OK. So uh, like for now, it will be difficult like what for, to understand what is a class and what is a method. But I'm just telling you the, the variable usage. But when you're doing our oops concepts, you'll get to know what is a class and what is a method. So let's say if you want to use the parameter name here. So I assume. OK. I'll be I'll be able to use this name within this method, but if I want to use a and b value, let's say so if I want to use a value outside the method. Now, this is my method declaration. So my, my method will start here and it will end here. 
here itself so the scope of the variable a and b is only within this this file lines this file lines of code so whatever i want to do with a and b value i can do it only in this file lines only with only within this method i cannot use a and b outside the method so this is another method right suppose if i want to use a and b again i need to declare a different variable int a equal to 1 so then it will accept so local variables are variables which are used in the method and instance variables are variables which are declared in the class and they can be used anywhere they can be used within the class and within the methods also and the reason why we are getting an error here is name uh, our method is a static method but you know, we don't have any modifier here so if you add something called a static here then you won't get any error so any variables which have a static keyword is called a static variable static instance variable so variables within the class is called instance variable and variable with which is having a static keyword is called your static variable and variables inside your method are called your local variables the same thing is explained within our ppt a variable which is declared inside the body of a method is called local variable a variable declared inside the class but outside the body of the method is called an instance variable it is not declared as static if a variable is declared as static then it is called a static variable and it cannot be local okay Th these are only the three types of variables which will be used within our entire java local static and instance okay um, after you know the variable type you also need to know the data type data type means what type of data are variable storing okay so data types specify the different sizes and values that can be stored in a variable so there are two two types of data in, uh, data types in java one is a primitive data type and one is a non primitive data type so primitive data types include boolean char byte short int long float and double and non primitive data types will include all the classes interface and arrays which means okay just take a look at this diagram so we have two types of data types which the one is a primitive data type and one is the non primitive data type so within the primitive if you want if you want to have a boolean boolean means either true or false it will hold only true or false nothing else okay so this is the keyword boolean and so um, boolean type means true or false so the, the keyword is boolean that's it now if you want to work with numbers then those will come under nu numeric type so if you want to oh, oh, if, like if you want to show something in a character you put it as a char keyword else now now if you want to store something uh, as integers then based on your integer value you have different types of uh, data types so if it is a single byte you put it as a byte if if it's a small value put it as a short value uh, um, let me show you the len constants also like uh, when to use uh, what data type so you have byte short int long floating and double floating and double means that if you want to print your decimal values you use the float float and double so let's say if you want to print your fuel prices so fuel prices are obviously in decimal values so then for um, you can you can, you can declare um, float price equal to something okay and rest comes here non primitive data types any data type other than these keywords will come under non primitive data type so these are strings arrays and everything so when we are doing the live coding uh, then we'll get then we'll get, get to know clearly <clears throat> so now these are the um, data types and the sizes so if you declare something as a boolean the default value will be false and default size is 1 1 bit so 1 bit of space will be stored within a heap memory okay so the char default value is 0 like um this is the this is the bitwise uh, <clears throat> value and the default size is 2 bits so if you are declaring something as byte default value is 0 Default size is one byte. 
for short it is 0 2 bytes int 0 and 4 bytes for long it is 0 l 8 bytes for float it is 0, 0.0 f that's the default value um, default value means if you don't assign any value to that variable then the default value will be assigned to it um, let's say So if I simply initialize something, hmm. Hmm. does anyone want to speak something? So if, if you want to declare a variable and initialize a value to um, some value, <clears throat> Phi, then a value would be phi. If you don't initialize it to phi, and if you just leave it as it is and you use the variable, then the default value will be um, appended to it. Let's say boolean a. Oops. Boolean p. Since I'm directly printing it, it's asking me to assign it. Let me take it as a different example. initialize the variable by default it should be declared to false similarly let's say long c and if i want to print the c value if i initialize the variable the default value is zero so if, if you're declaring something you'll get that value else you'll get you'll get the default values <clears throat> and that's the concept So now here we have um, the, the exact definitions. Um, the Boolean data type is used to store only two possible values. One is true and one is false. So this is how you declare a Boolean um, value. So Boolean is the keyword. X is the variable name. Equal to is the assignment operator. And the right hand side is your value. It can be either true or false. That's it. So if you try to add one here, it won't allow. Okay, type measurements cannot convert into to boolean. So, um, D, control D, data type. Variable name equal to value. So this is how you declare a variable, a simple variable. Specify the data type, give the variable name, and give the value. So if you want to declare something as a boolean, the data type would the data type keyword that is boolean. Variable name would be something x and value. In default it is false. Similarly, if you want to declare something as a byte, so the byte data type is a 8-bit sign to components integer. That means this data type range will lie from minus 128 to 127, inclusive of 127. So if you want to store any values within this range only, use a byte data type. So let's say B Y T E. This is the keyword byte A equal to 23. That's it. So this is how you declare it. Now, if I declare something greater than 127, it will not allow me. Because the value which I've entered, that, that is coming under int data type. Because my byte value can hold only minus 128 to 127. So, for efficient memory usage, tomorrow if you're writing code, and if like uh, all your values are lying um, within 127, within 127 limit, and if you try to initialize all the variables to int, int will take Sorry, just too much. See, it will take four bytes of memory 
any heap value but whereas if you declare all of them as byte it will take only one byte so um, so when you declare um, when you declare one byte you are like when you declare four uh, one integer you are saying four bytes of data that's why you need to know what is the data type which you are going to use and what is the size also like uh, whenever you are initializing any value you must know that okay uh, i'm initializing something to so and so like am i really going to hold this much of data or not so for byte it is minus 128 to 127 inclusive so if you're if your whole data within the complete project is lying between these integers only simply go with your byte keyword okay minus 128 to 127 default value is 0 and byte p equal 10 this is your this is how you declare a um, byte variable this is a short data type so this is a 16 bit signed to components integer its same its range will be lying from minus 3 32,768 to 32,767 inclusive. So, so if you are dealing with values within only this range, simply go with the short data type. It leaves only two bytes of data within your heap memory. Again, your default value is zero. Uh, how do you declare it? You just put a short keyword, variable name, and the value. So remember, like whenever you are trying your coding in Eclipse, if it is a keyword, it will simply um, put in bold. See, all these are keywords. So th these are these are set in bold. Let's see, so what is short? Let's see, equal to, that's it. Now, if I cross this value, right? Let's see, if I cross the 52,000, like its limit is 32,000. If I try to hold, uh, assign it something greater than the maximum value, it will again throw me an error. Simply, just based on your uh, total value, uh, try to use uh, try to use the heap memory more efficiently because when in your real time you'll be running large large amount of code, so it like it'll it it'll take some time. Like let's say if you're storing something as you know, like if you want to store uh, a simple byte data type in integer data type, your application will, like when you when you put in a byte data type, your application will execute within two seconds. If you, if you put it in integer data type, it, it will execute in four seconds. So that two seconds matters a lot because when you are whenever you are trying to browse through internet, uh, the more uh, the more delay you get, uh, the more delay you get the results, the more frustrating it would be. So to provide a user-friendly interface, your program should be as quick as possible. So nowadays, Java applications will always rely on fast APIs. So the response time will be within milliseconds, 10 to uh, 40 milliseconds. That means the variable usage is that good. So only if the variable is really needed there, they're going to declare the variable, use the variable. Else they, they'll, not, they'll not use it. So always keep in mind what value we are going to store and what is the memory that we are going to use when you're declaring something. Okay. The next is the int data type, the famous data type. So it, it can hold up till minus 2 power 31 to 2 power 31 minus 1. So this is a huge range. The, the default value is 0. And simply uh, declare a variable using the int keyword, int int, variable name and the value. The next is the long. This is a pretty much like this will be able to st store minus 2 power 63 to 2 power 63 minus 1. So if you want to hold really large data, large number of data, use the long keyword. Again, default value is 0. And you can you can declare something as long using the long keyword. Um, long h equal to something. Put, put something. It will hold the value. Out of range, okay. And for int, it is same thing. So whatever keywords you're going to use, they'll be highlighted in bold. Okay. So this is the long. Mm, any dots still here? Data types and the variable usage. data types and variable usage. Just let me know if you have any doubts or any clarifications needed. Check. Good, okay. So um, we have something called as variables.java. I'm going to push this code to a repository so that you can simply clone it and use it. 
okay so these are called instance variables and these are called your local variables so whenever we are using any uh, eclipse shortcuts uh, i'm just providing it here itself so if you want to print something you can enter this way system dot out dot print ln print something so and so but eclipse provides you simple shortcuts it is sysso control space simply use the print option this way so what are shortcuts which you are going to use i'm going to just put it there so just make use of them so it will make you it will make your coding a, a bit faster okay next comes your operators so now now we know where to store, where to show the data and what and what data to store in what data type so sim like in your real world you are going to play with data that's it so if you are a data scientist you'll, you'll just uh, work on data and if you are uh, if you are an application developer you take the data play with the data and provide some reasonable outputs so at the end of the day you are going to play with data so that data where are you going to store that that you are going to store it in variables next if you want to perform some operations on the variables you use something called as operators so in java we have these many types of operators unary arithmetic shift relational bitwise logical ternary and assignment operator okay um, let's discuss them in detail operators so let's discuss on unary operators so this double line is called the comment comment line so whenever you comment something that piece of code will not be executed so if i just type control slash slash you'll get the comment symbol so whenever you want to execute a, a particular piece of code simply just uncomment them again use the control slash button and uh, run it as a java application okay unary operator so um, this will this will work on a single operand single operand meaning uh, you have some value like int x equal to 10 and if you want to increment the value of x if you want to decrement the value of x use you can use this operators okay so this um, now if you if you put something called as x plus plus the value of x is 10 it will be incremented to 11 in the next iteration meaning no uh, let's say this is this is my line um here here my x oh, come on here my x value is 10 now if i add x plus 1 x plus 1 it will give me 11 so here this is the x value right? this x value is still 10 here 10 plus 11 is 11 so my 11 um, uh, the answer called 11 will be uh, will be available to the x value only in the next line meaning if i if i print the x value here my x value will be 11 if i print my x value here itself this is still 10 you getting my point this is very important because uh, you need to know like um, uh, where in the line uh, are we executing the code uh else i'll just execute the lines and i'll tell you just a minute now my x value is 10 and i and I incre increment it to 1 so x plus plus means which is equal to x plus 1 so my x plus 1 value will be available to the next line not in this line so what if i print x plus plus x, x value will, will be printed that is the left hand side Which which is ten. Now, if I go to my second line, if I use a plus plus x operator, this will print the right hand side uh, the right hand side value of x. So, if I come to my second line, my x value is eleven because I already incremented the value here. Okay. Now eleven plus one. Plus plus x uh, plus plus x means uh, take the value and increment it by one. 
so 11 plus 1 equal to 12 12 is in my right hand side and i'm putting my x value in right hand side so that's why i got an output of 12. this is the difference between x plus plus and plus plus x if you put your x plus if you put x on the left hand side the left hand side value will be printed but the current value will be 11 itself it will be incremented if you put as plus plus x uh, whatever is the value on the right hand side that will be printed could you please confirm whether this concept is clear or not if it is confusing i can explain it again Yes, no. Yes, okay. Anyone else facing any issues? Okay, okay. If you have in doubt, just put it in the chat window, okay? It is visible for me. Can you explain? Sure, yeah. X equal to x plus 1. Okay, let me take this example. So now, my x value is 10. 10 equal to 10 plus 1. Okay. So this means x plus plus. So my x is in the left hand side of plus plus symbol. So the left hand side value is 10. Okay. Now, let me go to second line. If I put plus plus x, my x is in the right hand side, meaning uh, what is 10 plus 1? It is 11. 11 equal to 11 plus 1. x plus plus or plus plus x means the same. That is, you are incrementing the value by 1. But the assignment will differ. On the left hand side, you have x. That means it will it will print the left value. On the right hand side, you have uh, the answer is 12 here. So it will print the 12 value. That's it. Based on your placement of x within the operator, it will give you the value. x plus plus means it will increment the value by uh, plus 1. Plus plus x means it will also increment the value by plus 1. But assigning will differ x value will be 10 in the uh, in the next line it, it this x value will turn to 11 only in the next coming uh, operation that means here here x is equal to 11 but but in this line my x value is still 10 of course I, of course i incremented the value but i, didn't, I still didn't get assign the value back to x it will be assigned back to x only in the next line Whereas, if you put it as plus plus x, within this operation, uh, the 12 number value will be assigned directly to x because we are uh, printing the right-hand side. Like if, if, you have, if you have knowledge on C language, uh, I think uh, this would be more clear for you. Nausha, is it clear now? Yes, thank you. So similarly, um, uh, x minus minus. So, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, current value current value is eleven, and now it is incremented to one. So my x value is twelve. Okay. I'm putting x minus minus. X minus minus means twelve equal to twelve minus one. Okay. And my x is in left left of minus minus symbol. So what is x value twelve? Hence it printed twelve. Okay, but if I come to the next line, meaning like uh, now once my line is uh, printed, it is coming to the next line. So now what is my x value? 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 equal to uh, minus minus x means uh, again the same 11 minus 1. Now my x is in right hand side. So whatever value is there uh, to the right hand side of my equal to symbol, that value will be printed. So 11 minus 1 is 10. Hence, I got a 10 value. Simple. Done? Hmm. 
now if you want to uh, like like if you want to work on uh, some uh, a bit tricky questions uh, you, you can mix up this example also like uh, we have a value as 10 b value as 10 a plus plus so my value of a plus plus would be 10 okay and plus plus a uh, a plus plus means 10 plus 1 so it is 11 11 plus 1 12 10 plus 12 equal to 22 So a plus plus means 10 equal to 10 plus 1. So since my a is in, to the left of the left of my plus plus symbol, it, it value will be 10. But since I already incremented it to the next line, it would be 11 plus 1, which is equal to 12. And since a is to the right hand side, 12 will be printed. So 10 plus 12 is 22. Similarly, b plus 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 b plus plus so b plus plus value will be 10 uh, and b plus plus value we want to write this here uh, b value is 10 10 equal to 10 plus 1 so for the next line b value will be 11 11 plus 1 equal to 12 but since my b value is still i'm, I'm still as, asking to print the b on the left hand side so left hand side value is 10 and uh, and we get the uh, 10 plus 11, 21 output. We simply run this as Java application, save. Okay, let me comment on this. In a Java application, you'll get 22 and 10, 21. So this is your working of, uh, of, of a unit operator. If you have only single operand and if you want to just work, do some calculations on the single operand you use a unary operator plus plus minus minus next comes your uh, next comes your complement so this will be a bit tricky but uh, let's try to understand it Okay, so we have something called as int p equal to two, and if I want to print, if I want to print, uh, this is called a tilde symbol. Uh, I have kept it uh, here itself. This will be just on uh, left to the left to your uh, number one button on the keyboard. So this is called a uh, tilde symbol. So uh, if you want to if you want to perform um, uh, a tilde operation on p, this is a uh, tilde means a bitwise complement. So tomorrow, if you want to uh, just if they ask you to perform a bitwise complement on your integer, just simply use a tilde operation. So uh, I think everyone knows the bitwise operations, right? 8421. 8421. If I put something as 0000, this would be 0. If I put something as 0001, this would be 1. Uh, 0010. Zero. Two, you are aware of this, right? Zero zero one one three. So if it, uh, if it is one, uh, this will be printed. If it is one on the second, uh, simply print the two. So if it is one and one, two plus one three. So this way you'll get all the numbers. Oh sorry, this is zero. My mistake. So similarly, you'll get uh, you'll get, you'll get the bitwise equivalence of all the numbers. Now, if you want to put bitwise complement of a single variable called p, p value is two. So bitwise equivalent is 0010. Okay. Now if you want to do a complement, simply inverse all the all the num uh, numbers. So 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 1 to 0, and 0 to 1. So 1101. One, one, one. That means 8 plus 4. 8 plus yeah, 8, 8, 4, and 1. 13. Just let me just run it. Minus three. So here now you'll get to know the definition of this minus of the total positive value starting from zero. 
so you are running a bitwise complement out of it so minus of the total positive value so total positive value is 3 um starting starting like if you just put a minus minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 if you put a 10 here run a java application it will show me minus 11 minus of the total positive value starting from 0 so minus of the total positive value is minus 10 minus 10 minus 1 minus 11 if you put something called as int q equal to minus 10 then this would be minus of the total positive value so minus 10 minus of minus is plus so plus 10 minus 1 you will get the 9 value um, let me put let me give the q value here okay so if a p value is 10 uh, the, the minus of 10 is minus 10 and do a minus out of it minus 1 which will give you minus 11 if you perform a bitwise complement on q equal to minus 10 so minus of total minus 10 is 10 minus 1 you'll get 9 this is the value okay that's it this is just your bitwise complement operator uh, tilde is the symbol for it bitwise for bitwise complement tilde t i l d tilde that's the operator mm, any doubt still here okay, okay let me just uh, cover this also uh, you have something called as negate, negate operator that is your exclamation mark so if you want to inverse a value, so here C value is equal to true. If you want to inverse this value to false, simply use a negate operator. So it's called the not operator, the, the inverse of C. So if I run this, C value is true. Uh, since, I, since I kept a exclamation mark, it is inversing my input. So C will change to false. This is the C value. when we're reading this um, as a simple java application uh, like um, like you won't find much of much of importance but tomorrow when you're going to do your uh, coding like when you code directly within the projects right then you'll get to know so if, so you'll perform all these operations in like within us within an entire source code there'll be at least one operation um, with these operands use your tilde symbol using bitwise and bitwise or using arithmetic operators hence mm, mm, like you just need to know like why are we using it okay why and where to use it so if you want to negate uh, negate a value like let's say uh, take a if, if i just take a real world example let's say if my login name uh, like you, you have a simple login page it, it takes a name password and email as a parameter if your login name um you are setting your login name to accept only string only your name but tomorrow some like uh, um, you, you just provide numbers 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 10 so that's that's not a valid value right so for those cases like if login if log, like, like you just do a string check there if not of login name okay uh, throw some exception something this way so this way uh, now when we're trying to do some coding here this is a simple a single line statement for us but in, in real time you're going to use it uh, in a very complex way so you have multiple if else if multiple condition statements and you can you can use the negate uh, negation operator there wisely so check uh, check two and four conditions uh, evaluate conditions do do all the analysis and then use these operators so th these are very important these are very useful also okay so bitwise complement and then neg uh, the negation operator in dot still here If 
not and jump on to arithmetic operators okay so these are arithmetic operators are pretty straightforward so um, it's unary Multiplication A B C D E. Okay, so I have A equal to ten and B equal to five. I I just put a uh, plus symbol. It will be fifteen minus five. Yeah, like if you want to do a multiplication, put asterisk. It's called S T R I K S T R I K R T R I K. Forgot the spelling. Just put and that is called your asterisk symbol. Uh, division. If I want to perform a division, uh, let's say ten by five. This will return the quotient. Okay, ten by five. The quotient is two. But if you give a percentile b, percentile is called your modulus symbol. This will this will return the remainder, remainder of a division. So when you are whenever you are going to like uh, like uh, like um, uh, get into your coding questions or get into your, your interview questions this is the most common case where um, they you'll be confused uh, you have in the option we have you have both the values 2 and 0 so you need to know for, um, for the simple division uh, division symbol it will return the quotient and for a uh, uh, modulus symbol it will return the remainder i'll just simply run this as java application So ten plus five fifteen. Ten minus five five. Ten into five fifty. And ten by five is two. And uh, and ten by five, the remainder will be zero. Uh, this is a, this is a just pretty straightforward arithmetic operators: multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, and modulus. Next comes your logical operators. Logical operators are pretty much uh, like if we have like if we have knowledge on your logic gates, the AND gates and the OR gates. This works. This works in the same way. Let's say a equal to ten, b equal to five, and c equal to twenty. Now, I perform a condition here like a less than b, ten is less than five. So this condition is false. And false and false. So a is less than c, ten is less than twenty. So false and true. This is false. If if we take a typical and operation, uh, only true and true is true. False and true is false. So similarly, if I take this condition, uh, a less than b, ten less than five, this is false. A less than c. How come I have the same condition? Okay, this is bitwise and okay, got it. And if I take a less than c. It is false. False and true is false. Now, your simple, they call your simple operations. The and and or operations. So you have you have logical operations and you have bitwise operations. So if we use a, a double and, this is called a logical and operation. Logical and operation means uh, false and true, false, true and false, 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 false is true and true, true is true. Similarly, if we have a single and operation, like a single and operator, this is called an ampersand operator. If we use a single ampersand operator, it is going to do a bitwise and. Bitwise and means, let's say I have two variables, x value equal to nine and y value equal to eight. Again, if I take the eight four two one code, eight four two one, for for me to get a nine value, I need to put one in eight, zero zero, and under one I need to put one. So this is my bitwise equivalent to number nine. Similarly, for eight, uh, my bitwise equivalent would be one zero zero zero. Okay. So if I perform a bitwise and on this operator, it it will simply return one triple zero. So if I run this as Java application. So this condition, this condition, uh, this is false and this is true. So false and true is false, and this is false and this is true. False and true is false. And if I perform a bitwise and operation x and y, 
uh, x and y and simply get the and operation of 9 and 8 that is 8 this is a logical and operation can can uh, can you say once uh, bitwise and operation operator bitwise and operator okay yeah. so uh, did you understand the 8421 concept uh, yes yes okay so to get the nine value you put um, you put 1 0 0 1 so 8 okay. plus 1 is 9 okay yeah and you are performing an and operation on 8 8 is 1 0 0 0 0 yeah. hmm. okay so if you perform bitwise and operation on 1 double zero one and 1 double zero its value is 1 double zero okay. mm -hmm. right 1 1 1 uh, 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 is 0 yeah got it got it you'll get an 8 value that's the 8 okay let me comment out this and now so uh, whatever we had discussed that is and operation now let's go to our operation this is your logical or operation so for logical or operation you need to use something called as a pipe symbol pipe symbol will be visible right on your enter key within a keyboard so just hold a shift and just above your enter key you have something called as a straight line that's called a pipe symbol p a p pipe so if you want to perform or operations use the pipe symbols mm. So in a equal to 10, in b equal to 5, in c equal to 20. Mm, now let's say a greater than b, 10 is greater than 5. So this is true. And a is less than c, 10 is less than 20. This is true. So true or true. It will return true. Now this is uh, this is a bitwise or operation. So uh, let me just, uh, since uh, I explained the bitwise or in here, just remove this line. Now let's now again take the same example index equal nine and y equal to eight bitwise or operation. So one zero zero one and one zero zero zero. If I perform an or operation, one and one is zero, zero zero zero, zero zero zero, one and zero is one. So eight four two one code equivalent of zero 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 one is one. So if I perform an an or operation on nine and eight, I'll get a value of one. So if you perform a logical operation, that is, if you, if you provide two um, like uh, two pipe symbols, that will come under your logical operation. Meaning it will check the left condition, it will check the right condition, and based on the condition, you'll, you'll get a value. True or true, true. But if you put a single pipe symbol, oh sorry, this is a symbol. But if, if you put if you put this R symbol, it will show you it will give you the uh, bitwise uh, R operation. Not X or R. Getting it? Okay, so now um, the last part of an operator is your ternary operator. So until now, we have discussed on unary operator, which will be working on single operands, arithmetic operators, where you have uh, multiple operands and you just do the arithmetic operations and you have logical operators. So you do like if you are using two operands, like you can use your logical and logical or bitwise and and bitwise or operations. Next comes your ternary operator. So this is going to be very, very useful with when you are doing your coding. It's a simple operator. Mm. Uh, let's take a simple code. If A is less than B, sys out A. 
and C sort B. Okay. Uh, now, if you see the, if you see the line, uh, it is total four lines of execution. I check the condition. Print this else. Okay, I check the condition. If it is satisfying, I'll print this else. I'll print this. So this full piece of code can be written, can be written in a single line. That is called your. That is by using a ternary operator. Simply, um, let me expand it for you. Int m equal to put the condition here whatever you put in the if if condition put your condition here if a is less than b so you're, you're checking against the condition so put a question mark if a is less than b print a else so this semi this colon symbol is for else print b A colon B. That's it. Print M. So instead of writing this four line piece of code, I'm just writing it in a single line by making use of this ternary operator. Question mark and a colon symbol. So if this has if this condition is satisfying, print the left operand. If it is not satisfying, print the right operand. That's it. Let's call it ternary operator. If I just put, if I just run it, you get the values too. Because since my a is less than b, if I increment the, if, like if I reverse the condition, b value will be printed. Fine. So, like when to, like when you're writing code straight, you just use optimized ways of writing. So here, if else block also will will hold good. Like if something print this if uh, else print this so even that block will hold good but yes you, you are just uh, um, simplifying your code by using something called as a ternary operator ternary operator is used as a one line replacement for if then else statement and used a lot in java programming this is the only this is the only conditional operator which takes three operands so generally if it, if you're taking a condition like if you, if you want to check against a condition, you take two operands, compare the two operands and just make a decision. But this is the only operator which will take three operands, a condition and two uh, two variables. Okay, so tomorrow if you're, if you're going to get any question, like what is an um, operator which takes three operands, straight away, tell it as a ternary operator. Uh, the last comes your uh, assignment operator. Uh, so this is a pretty straightforward uh, operator. Uh, let's say you have a equal to 10 and b equal to 20. If you write a plus equal to four, a plus equal to four. If you write this value, this means a equal to a plus four. This is equivalent. So instead of you writing a equal to a plus four, simply write a plus equal to four. Again, optimized way of writing your code. This a plus equal to four is called your assignment operator. Plus equal to, minus equal to. So these this operators are called your assignment operators. Let me just run this as Java application. Yeah, 14 and 16. Any doubt still here? Okay, if you have no doubts, let me conclude this. I think we have passed four minutes. Uh, I thought of just running the, like um, pushing the source code to our repository. I'll just do it quickly and we can conclude the session. Okay. So this is my git repository. I just click on right click. Dot as git. Git commit. Added variables, comma operators. Okay. So today we worked on 
variables variables are class okay these are class files so today we worked on operators we worked on variables and a basic java program so whatever we worked on today i just selected those three files i added a message here and i'm just going to do a git commit and push done so if i open my github account if i open my tetra course 2 here you'll get the source code added variables and operators just click on this whatever we have worked on today those will be visible for you here just simply open the operands uh, whenever if you want to trigger the code if you want to just do a git clone take the whole source code whatever you want to execute simply uncomment those lines like just go to your eclipse if you want to run this piece of code right just select it control slash the comments will be removed and simply right click run as java application okay so every day whatever we are going to discuss i'm going to push it to our uh, repository uh, just uh, uh, when, when you're, you're logging you're logging to the next session just take a pull from the repository so you'll, you'll have up-to-date code with you i think we can close the session today uh, if you have any doubts please do ping me or let me know here